Got it. Hey guys, welcome back to the show today. I'm so excited to have the infamous Lindsay Van Schoik here today. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome, welcome. Hi, how are you? I am good. I say infamous because if anyone has listened to, hmm, I should have wrote down the number, but in the, earlier in the season, I had Matt Van Schoik on here, a fellow battle buddy who I served with, and I got to hear a lot about his amazing wife, Lindsay. And so I was super intrigued to want to talk more with you. So with that being said, guys, this is Lindsay. She is the wife of a veteran, but like I, I got lost even writing down all these amazing titles of this boss babe over here. She is not only a nurse <laughs> practitioner, but she is a co-owner of Final Call Fitness and Nutrition, where they have a couple of different gyms. And I know do other stuff like in the realm of fitness and nutrition, like she also has her own, um, another business where uh, it's rejuvenating fit, uh, nutrition. And um, yeah, so pretty amazing. And I can't wait to hear more about you. So just kind of tell us, um, goodness, see, and like I was saying before I pushed record, this is the most nervous I have been about one. And, you know, you had said why, you know, I'll tell you, it's because I really wanted one of the goals that I wanted with celebrate the struggle was to also bring in different perspectives of the military family like um, spouses kids parents and really kind of hear their perspective on certain things and so as I was thinking of like what do I want to, what is everything I want to ask her? What would be most beneficial to share her story and people get enlightened through it? And hopefully like some are, you know, some people are definitely going to be able to relate and then hopefully get some hope from your story today. And so it's kind of hard for me to even know where to begin, but I'll go ahead and do what I took usually do. I have people kind of just tell us a little bit about you, Lindsay, tell us a little bit about you. Like, where do you come, where do you come from? And like, when did you get intrigued with nursing? Let's start there. Cause I kind of know, you know, a little bit about when you met Matt, but this yeah. is a, yeah, go ahead. Cool. So, um, I am Lindsay. I live in Illinois with my husband, Matt. We have three kiddos. We have a almost 13 year old girl, a 10 year old son and a seven year old son. So they keep us like super busy with their sports and, and all that type of stuff. Um, so I was raised in Illinois. Um, my parents both grew up here. My dad joined the Air Force um, right out of high school. And my mom moved to the state of Washington um, and married him. She graduated high school early to marry him. So um, I was born in Washington and I lived there until I was two. Um, and then my parents got divorced when I was two. Um, military life was just not my, what my mom imagined it to be. Um, so we moved back to Illinois. Um, I wasn't raised with my dad just because he was in the Air Force and was constantly moving and traveling. So I saw him like in the summer. So that was kind of a rocky relationship growing up just because I was a mama's girl um, mm -hmm. and just had lived with her and was super duper close with her. So um, I got into nursing Oh gosh, there's like so much backstory to it. So in high school, um, I was a really big mama's girl, perfectionist, type A, cheerleader, cross country, um, had a pretty clicky group of friends um, that weren't necessarily the nicest all the time. Um, and I grew up in a house that was like not my mom's fault, but constantly talking about like food and nutrition and she coached aerobics and was into fitness and was doing weight watchers and all that type of stuff. So I think I started my first diet my in eighth grade, which is like crazy young. Can't even think about my daughter trying to diet right now. Uh -huh. Um and it it was fine. Like I ran cross country and all that type of stuff. But my junior year I started having a lot of trouble with my friends. Um I had a ton of anxiety. Like if my mom would leave and go on vacation, I would like stare at the window thinking that she was going to die in a car accident, which is the most ridiculous thing. Like who at a junior in high school thinks about that? Um, 
but to kind of cope with that, I kind of delved down this eating disorder, eating disorder rabbit hole. So from my junior year until I met Matt, I struggled a lot with anorexia and bulimia. Um, so I was like 4.0 student in high school. My parents were aware of my eating disorder, but didn't really understand it, tried to get me some counseling, but I was pretty good at hiding it um, and denying it and all that good stuff. So I went away to college at Butler um, in 2004, um, got into their pharmacy school, had this huge goal of being a pharmacist whenever I grew up. Um, eating disorder crazily spiraled out of control when I wasn't at home. Um, freshman year was really rocky, didn't get the grades that I probably was hoping to get, um, joined a sorority, which was the worst thing I possibly ever could have done because talk about like body image struggles um, and that competitive atmosphere wasn't necessarily the best decision, probably. Um, so got really disconnected kind of from my family and parents as I was just kind of like really delved into that eating disorder. Um, sophomore year, my eating disorder got really bad. Um, so I almost started failing my classes my sophomore year. Um, my weight dropped drastically. Um, I pulled away from everyone, my parents, my boyfriend, my sorority sisters. Um, when I went home for Christmas break, I think I weighed like 80 pounds um, as a 20 year old, which Dang. is crazy. Um, so my parent, my mom, I had pretty much avoided going home that whole semester because I didn't want anyone to like confront me about it. So um, went home for Christmas break. My mom was like, holy crap, like we have to get you help. I wasn't eating anything and anything that I was eating, I was throwing it up or exercising it off or just really unhealthy relationship with food. So my mom took me to Indy to get established with the counselor since that's where I was going to school. And she had a conversation and one look at me and she was like, I can't help you. You need to be inpatient. You need to get hospitalized for this, um, which was scary. Um, if you know anything about eating disorders and psychiatric care it's either really shitty on a psych unit where they don't address eating disorders uh -huh. um and just stick you with people with schizophrenia and all kinds of stuff Ugh. or it costs a whopping like 50 to a hundred thousand dollars to get treatment For like a really good insurance place. yeah insurance doesn't cover it so oh for like two weeks my mom was on the phone with different places trying to get me help my eating disorder I mean, I went hard with my eating disorder then, threw up everything because I was like, well, I'm going to go get help for this. So I might as well, you know, didn't really want to give up that control that I thought yeah. that it gave me. So my parents ended up pulling money out of their retirement, borrowing money from my grandma um, and got me into a treatment center in Anderson, Indiana. Um, I think it cost them like $50,000 for the six weeks that I was there. Um, the day I went in, I had a bunch of lab work done, an EKG, and they basically told me that if I wouldn't have went into treatment that day, I would have had a heart attack and died at age 20. That's well, going to make me cry just because. I know. Yeah, I, I'm over yeah. here. My eyeballs are sweating. <laughs> um, so that was scary, like really scary. Um, I wasn't allowed to like walk up the stairs at the eating disorder treatment. I wasn't allowed to have any caffeine. I wasn't allowed to do like anything, but just lay there and eat for the first week and so now like medical background oh knowledge I and know that I can only sorry to interrupt but then like how much of a um uh, without using bad language like a mind f that is for yeah. someone who has an eating disorder and like you're gonna make me lay in bed and eat for two days oh my gosh That's, yeah sorry I mean, they ahead. had to carry me up the stairs to my bed just because they didn't want me moving mm -hmm. um so it was an amazing treatment center. Um, when I was in it, it was called the Lotus House. It's called the Sela House now. Um, so it's a Christian-based treatment center. Um, I was there. Everyone that worked there, some of my dogs are getting in the stove. Everyone that worked there um, had a history of an eating disorder, had recovered from it. Oh. So it was super awesome. Um, but that was kind of a wake-up call to me. Like, Obviously, the if you know anything about your heart and electrolytes, the purging had made my potassium levels super duper low, um, and that's what was causing my heart issues was my really low potassium levels. So um, treatment was really good. 
Um, I think the hardest thing for me was I did not understand why I had an eating disorder. I was in this treatment center with four other girls and they all had like traumatic experiences happen to them. Like one of them was raped. Um, one of them had went from like 300 pounds to 80 pounds. So she was struggling with like all this loose skin and looking in the mirror. And for me, I was like, well, I've lived like, I've lived a great life. Like my parents were super good parents. Nothing ever bad happened to me. Um, so it was a lot of like figuring out where my eating disorder was stemming from. So I'm super type A, which is why I have like four different <laughs> jobs. I have a lot of anxiety and I really like to be in control of things. <clears throat> and I think the lack of my parents and having a father figure around really contributed a lot to it. Um, so was in treatment for six weeks, of course, being the type A person that I was, I was the perfect eating disorder patient, did everything I was supposed to do, um, followed the plan, gained the weight I was supposed to gain, but I'm not sure that I ever worked through all the things that I should have worked through when I was there. So got out, um, took that semester off from school when I went back to Butler um, I decided to switch my major to psychology and social work because I was like, I want to help people. Um, I want to help people with eating disorders. I want to help people go through what I went through. Um, I started working at the treatment center that I had went through just because, you no, know, I was the best perfect eating disorder patient, um, did what I was supposed to do, thought they had my shit together all the time. Why the last two years of college, I was completely relapsing and going back into my old habits. Um, so fast forward to my senior year, um, I started going down the rabbit hole again, um, pushing everyone away, not doing the things that I was supposed to be doing, um, just really struggle. So I went home for Christmas break again. And my parents were like, you're not going back to school. Like you're going to go back into treatment. I know you have only a semester left of college, which Thankfully, I had finished a whole year of college and high school through dual credit stuff. So me missing two of semesters of college. <laughs> yeah. So me missing two semesters of college, I still was able to graduate on time with my psychology and social work degree. Um, moved, back to, moved back home, got threatened with going to treatment centers again. Um, my parents had everything lined up again for me to go. Didn't want them to have to pay for that. So I was like, no, I'm going to get my crap together you know, I'm going to pull through this, do it. So they were like, okay, we'll give you a month to see if you can, if you can pull out of that. So I started doing better. Um, I, my parents let me move out with one of my friends just because living at home wasn't necessarily, they were kind of just enabling me and feeding into it. So moved across the street from Matt. Um, and that's kind of where, um, we started dating. About three months later, I got pregnant with my daughter and that pulled me out of that eating disorder real quick. Um, oh, so then it, it was then. It was, yeah. it was then when, wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. So, okay, yeah. so that's when you, I'm so, in, first of all, before I forget a couple of things, like that is, I'm so happy to hear like how much your family loves you that, that they made it happen to get you the yeah, best I'm treatment. Lucky. Yeah, like that. And then uh, one thought I had earlier is I wonder um, now if, do you know, does insurance cover uh, treatment for, you know, see, that's sad. That's sad. They do. They cover like psychiatric inpatient treatment. For eating disorders? Yes, but okay. it's not the type of like resident, like when I, like, so my eating disorder treatment was like this huge, gorgeous house. We had the best staff. It wasn't like a hospital type setting right. at all. Um, we did like equine horse therapy and art therapy. Um, and it was specifically only for eating disorders. And there's treatment centers all over the world that do that, but most of them insurance doesn't cover. Yeah. Which is sad. It, and it's a, it's super sad. It's very sad. I mean, and, and the sad thing is, is that um, I don't know anyone that's went into treatment and was successful the first 
inpatient treatment round. Mm -hmm. Normally it takes like six to seven inpatients to, to make it to where you don't relapse. Sure. Um, so goodness, let me gather my thoughts. Hopefully I'll just <laughs> be able to edit out that brain fart. It's amazing how like you've taken the biggest struggle of your life and, and made it like your purpose to help others. Yeah. Like you literally have used the hardest thing in, in such a amazing way to change lives. Super cool. So let's talk about those life changes. So like, as I hear Matt's perspective of, you know, being like 20 beers in on a porch, grilling food for the party house <laughs> and this neighbor girl just rolls up and is like, hi, like, tell me about your perspective here. Like, had you already like seen the crazy party house, like going on, like what led you to roll up on what, you know, like, cause I would feel <laughs> like, oh, well, this, this drunk dude over here, you know, like, I don't know, like if I wasn't yeah. a drinker, like if I was a drinker and I was like, Hey, what's going on? What you're cooking, what you cooking. But if I wasn't a drinker and I'm guessing you weren't since you were really struggling with your, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I was not eating and drinking a lot of vodka. Yeah. So oh, you were not eating, developing. but you were drinking a lot of vodka. Okay. Gotcha. So I was kind of numbing myself with so did vodka make you well. brave to go roll up and say hi I guess <laughs> I mean, now, like so Matt and I went to high school together it's not like we didn't know each other oh um he, he was two years older than me in high school but we did not probably ever speak in high school we ran around in two completely different crowds um whatever um I'm gonna kind of say I always growing up was the type of person that wanted a boyfriend like always had a boyfriend. And I think it's probably because I needed someone to fill that like void of having a father. Um, so I was single at the time. So I just strolled on over there and met Matt. Now I know I knew Matt drank. I did not know the extent of the drugs and any of that stuff that he was going through. Um, he didn't have a license because he had gotten a DUI um, and got it taken away. So I did know that. Um, but I didn't know the extent of everything that was going on, but we like just started talking, started hanging out. Um, and then we just like kind of became inseparable after that. But I think we both needed each other. Right. Like he didn't know what I was going through and I didn't know what he was going through, but somehow we both like we're helping each other. Absolutely. Like from an outsider looking in at both your stories and where you were in your journey, like I feel the same way. I feel like you guys totally needed each other and the universe just totally brought your paths together. Like, yeah, to make it such a, an amazing story. So you end <laughs> up getting pregnant and, uh, and that was a, from his perspective, you know, that was quite, it, well, I mean, clearly it's a game changer for both of you, for him over here. He's realizing like, oh, like I got to get my shit together. Like I'm about yeah. to be a dad. And, and then you're like, you are fortunately, like you moved into the space of dealing with, I don't even know if those are the appropriate words, dealing with your eating disorder. But so I understand like, clearly you, um, went hard, you know, you, took care of yourself and it was your pregnancy that helped you to finally get over it. But did you continue to, um, do any, anything else that helped you through that journey of, um, you know, not wanting to have control over that or was it, what did things just totally change having a baby? But cause like you had mentioned, no. the, okay. You didn't do, um, uh, I mean, being pregnant, like, I think when I got pregnant with Laney, I was 93 pounds. Um, so being pregnant, like made me know I have to eat. And I have to like take care of myself because I don't want to lose. I don't want to hurt this baby. Um, but control did not go away. Um, the first, oh gosh, first five years of Matt and I's relationship was rough. Um, like not sure how we made it to where we are today or are still together because I was a total control freak. 
trying to like get over my eating disorder, all that, like deal with gaining weight, deal with all of that stuff. And he's trying to deal with all of his stuff. But luckily my family is so supportive. Like I had the, I, my mom and dad, my mom and stepdad bought us a house um, that we eventually bought from them. They just took like really good, good care of us. Um, and so I, during that time, I got a job working um, in in a hospital, working with um, mentally ill patients, like people that had just gotten out of the state hospital. I was helping them transition back into like independent living. Um, so that I like, got a really good support team um, at work that knew what I had gone through as well. Um, so I think that helped me a lot. But after I had Lainey, like it, I struggled a lot because I gained like 60 pounds with her. So for me, weighing 150 pounds is like, oh my, even though I was pregnant, like terrifying. Um, so pro- like after I got, after I had her, I was breastfeeding her. So I had to eat because I was breastfeeding her. Mm-hmm. And then when I quit breastfeeding her, we got pregnant with Gunner. Had to eat because I was pregnant with Gunner. Um, after we had Gunner, breastfed Gunner. Um, after, well, we had some miscarriages in there as well. Um, after I got pregnant, after Gunner was done breastfeeding, I got pregnant, had another miscarriage, then got pregnant with Gannon, then breastfed Gannon. So for like eight years, I was pregnant or breastfeeding. Mm. So there was like, a, like I had to eat. Like I had to eat and take care of my kids. Um, after that, it, like I struggled for a little bit, um, just trying to figure out where my body was and what, what it should be doing. Um, but that's when I found CrossFit, um, which Matt introduced me. Like before CrossFit, I would like run, 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 run run to burn off anything that I ate that I thought was bad. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I was restricting and purging and stuff like that, but I definitely didn't have a healthy relationship with food. Like I would work out to like punish myself from foods that maybe I had chosen to eat. So it wasn't until I found CrossFit and shifted that goal of like, I don't need to be skinny. I need to be strong. Like I want to be able to do these things. Like it's cool to be able to lift heavy weights and, and focused that energy into something more beneficial and really realize that like food wasn't the enemy, that food was like fuel for your body and it's nourishment. And it's not something that you should punish yourself Mm -hmm. for doing. Um, it's really over the last like six years that I feel like I completely came out of my eating disorder. That's wonderful. Cause actually that was something that I had wrote down, like whether, cause you had mentioned in the treatment that you had got to go to that you said you didn't really feel like like even though you were a type a student and did all the things you weren't sure that you had you know worked through that those feelings and that control and so that's an incredible story I had seen. So like being a follower of your rejuvenating <laughs> nutrition page, I got to say uh, it's so enlightening and I it's so enlightening to where like I share it with other, I talked to other people about it. Like I added a friend because oh, I was good. telling, yeah, I was telling her about the, it's such insightful information and I can understand it, you know? Yeah. I, and then I, and you're a powerhouse. <laughs> you are a powerhouse. <laughs> so I dig that too, but just your realness and openness. And so I, with that, like I noticed the other day that you had posted something uh, about how you used to have an eating disorder, which by the way, you were very pretty in the picture, but you're like a hot fox. Now you're like way prettier. (laughs) And so that was the first time, you know, I read it, you know, but now hearing your story, it's just incredible, incredible. And I love that I love to hear your perspective on how like you really did work through that eating disorder because when you start to see food as nourishment and like feel for your body and so now it's amazing like you you use that struggle and that biggest lesson that you've learned to now like helping other people understand that as well and get things under control. Um, I have so many questions but 
one thing that I was thinking about before this call, as I was just reflecting on, again, how much I get from your post and uh, you teaching people about things I need to hear, you know, it's saying words like thyroid, pituitary gland, I have all those, like a hypothyroidism, I have a Mm -hmm. pituitary tumor. And um, I was thinking to myself, oh, oh, I got a brain fart. Let's see. I'm gonna have to edit this part out too. Um, Well, I can't do that in a video, I guess. Uh, I was thinking to myself, Jeez. Yes, I got it. <laughs> this, I mean, okay. this, this was a perfect example right there. So I was reflecting upon it thinking like the first thing that comes to mind, you know, like we know that our bodies are very important because we don't want to have heart issues, you know, yep. nutrition and, and that stuff could take your life, you know, with heart issues. But I was thinking like, it took a, a lot from me as well. And, and it was a huge turning point in my life two years ago when I fainted and I had a, I fell on my, I cracked my skull in two places. And now as a result, I have a traumatic brain injury because when my head bounced, the brain must have a smack the front of my forehead. And now I have executive functioning skills like short-term memory and forgetting what I'm talking about and stuff like that. So that was why it was like a perfect example of what I was trying to think about, but my nutrition, it's, it's what did it like my blood sugar. It was then like me identifying that Ah. I had already struggled with blood sugar throughout my life. Like in the book I read, like I, I pass out on the first day of basic training, waiting in line to get some food. But again, like that, that was devastating. And to think, as I reflected on it afterwards, thinking to myself, like looking at what I ate and drank that day and it being like spiked in levels as I learned about it, you know, now since then, yeah, the insulin levels, like to think that like I could have prevented my traumatic brain injury. I could have prevented cracking my skull. Um, that stinks, but like, I'll just, I'll use it to grow and, and yeah. Can, yeah. So I was well, just, it's wanna- just like, we as a society don't think of food like everything revolves around food mm-hmm. like you go out to eat for celebrations like and you have to eat like it's part of it but no one really understands what your body needs and how to nourish it yeah. um and it, we don't teach our kids how to do yeah. that either um and so until something happens to you or until you're just fed up and hate the way you feel it's really hard to know what nutrition looks like. And there's so much conflicting information out there as to absolutely what type of diet you should be following and, and what, what, what supplements should you be taking and what diet pill? Like there's so much conflicting information out there. Like, I just want people to know like what's real and what they should be doing um, mm-hmm. and what's going to get them to where they want to go in their life. Mm-hmm. There's so much conflicting information, even to the point where like you get it from some doctors, right? Like I, yeah. I appreciate my endocrinologist, um, but he had said a few times, like um, with me struggling to get my A1C um, down and cholesterol, he was like, you know, you should cut down your calories and and I have learned from like your post and then another battle Jody run. She told me years ago, like, no, like don't, don't cut your calories out. Like you could actually increase your calories based on like what you're eating. And, um, on a side note, a friend of mine invited me over to have oysters this weekend. And I thought to myself, like, ugh, ugh. never tried them in my life just because of how <laughs> they look just because of how they look. And I have thing, a thing with textures, you know? So like, I've never touched them, but I said to her, I was like, but you know, according to what I learned on, uh, Lindsay's post on rejuvenating nutrition the other day, that's good for my thyroid. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. so I was like, I might try them this weekend for, because of you, Lindsay. Oh, good. Way to be a life changer. (laughs) So I, yeah, but like side note on that, like 
as far as like doctors and stuff, like um, I didn't get much nutrition training in nurse practitioner school. Doctors don't get much training in medical school. We get training on how to treat diseases. We get training on like what meds you should prescribe to what conditions. So mm -hmm. if you have hypertension, I get trained on, well, let's start with lisinopril. Um, and yeah, your diet's important, but we'll just send you to a dietitian. Mm -hmm. Like we're not really taught about that. So everything I've learned about nutrition is from my own investing. I mean, I probably invested $15,000 in different nutrition education mm -hmm. courses just so I can learn just because I'm a nerd and I like to learn. Um, but just because I want to be able to help people make sure that I have all the knowledge. Um, so, and it's just like, here's our hospital has a weight loss clinic. It freaking pisses me off because it is, we send patients there and they're put on like an 800 calorie a day diet consisting of two shakes, which uh. isn't even food. It's processed. Um, and then maybe you can eat one meal and it makes me so angry because you are not teaching anyone, anything about nutrition. You're not teaching them life saving, sustaining habits. You're not teaching them anything about food. You're just cutting their calories back to not to an unsafe place. Yeah. Yeah. It's like my biggest that is pet peeve. Um, so it's at the point now, like I am a, like, I'm someone that I get referred people a lot for weight loss just because I know what the heck I'm talking about as far as nutrition goes. Mm -hmm. So do you get like, they refer to you at your job or like you outside to uh, final call? Fin okay. Yeah. 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 Super cool. Super cool. And I bet you do have a plethora of information actually. So before I ask you a question and totally change the subject if somebody wanted to like learn from you and get way more guidance on them and their specific body type and their goals how can they do how can they hook up with you they go to your facebook i mean we'll put it all yeah, in the show so, notes too yeah so i have an email rejuvenating nutrition coaching at gmail.com or i have a facebook page rejuvenating nutrition coaching um and then i have a group too where we post even more stuff mm -hmm. on it. It's all free. Um, the post I, the stuff I post on social media, like I want it to help people. Um, but if you like need coaching, um, on how you should be eating and how you should be moving your body and how you should be sleeping and how you should be, how to control your stress. Like my coaching program, isn't just nutrition. It's like life health coaching. Like we dig into yeah. some really deep stuff. Cause that's where it all stems from. Right. So that's good that you do that because yeah. yeah. Good. Awesome. I'll make sure I put all that in the show notes so um, people can be able to contact you. Now I'm going to totally change yeah. the subject because I wanted okay. to, I, I went as a, you know, like I mentioned me being nervous the re, and it being because I wanted people to be able to see um, the war at home from a different perspective. And by the war at home, you know, I'm referring to not just when a soldier is deployed, but like what that looks like for the life that follows. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah. with, so backing it up after meeting Matt and, oh, I got a couple questions. Let me make sure. I, first of all, did, did Matt know, um, right away or, or, when you had a baby, like that you had struggled with, with food and your relationship with the eating disorder? Um, I think he knew, but, not, but we not, didn't really talk about the extent of it until like, it's kind of like war, right? Like he didn't yes. really open up to me about stuff. It's just gradually come over the yeah. years. And I feel like the same with me, like the more like close we got as a couple, the more we started sharing with mm -hmm. each other about our struggles um so like the first few years it was like we didn't even know each other like we were two people having a baby together and living together but none of us but neither of us really knew who the other person was like deep down inside mm -hmm. um and that was hard like hard we weren't like financially stable um Matt like to still drink on the weekends. Um, I didn't understand what he was going through. At one point he wanted to rejoin the army. And I was like, hell no. Like my parent, I grew up with a family 
that my dad wasn't around because of the military. Like we're not putting our kids through that. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a battle that we went through. I'm really glad that he had my dad. Um, so my dad is a, I would say is a really good father figure to Matt. They're super close. Um, because my dad and stepmom are both retired from the air force. They both still work in the air force as civilians. So they can talk about a lot of things that Matt doesn't have that, um, have that to talk to about other people besides you guys, but right. That's good. He's very, he's very shut off. Like he doesn't like to talk about his own problems with other people. Mm -hmm. Um, like doesn't want to put that burden on other people. So I think it's good that my dad can kind of like pull it out of him a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like you just nailed it on the only other question that I definitely wanted to, well, not the only other one, but the next question I was going to ask you, like, was what did Matt, the returning veteran, like struggle with and how did you deal with it? But you kind of already said like he was still drinking on the weekends and then wanted to join the military. So he was like still trying to find his place and how to, Mm -hmm. I know he had said on our conversation, like. It, when you had at, when he finally got up off the couch and went for a run with you he was thinking like mm-hmm. this I know how to do this this I can do for her and at that time we just didn't know how how to be you know the best man yeah, the best so that provider was, so that was three years into our marriage that was like right after I had Gunner um and he was working out of prison and holy moly that made him like not nice like he had a lot of anger issues that he Mm -hmm. needed to like take out somewhere else that would lead us to like fights and and not that he would ever like hurt me it would just lead to fights when we get in a fight he wants to go shut down and not talk about it I'm the type of person that wants to fight until we get it resolved so it just was like every month we'd have this huge blow up fight so he found running that helped a lot um, but it wasn't until he found CrossFit and I think he found his purpose because he like he went and worked in the oil field with his dad then he worked at the prison then he worked at Marathon which is like the dream job to have in our community but he was still an asshole through all of it like because he was not happy like he hadn't figured out um, his like purpose in life or how he hadn't even figured out how to work through what had happened mm-hmm. overseas so once he found CrossFit and was able to dial that, those feelings into those workouts and that negative energy into something else. And then it turned into, this is something that I'm super passionate about that I want to do with my life. Then that's when everything kind of started to change for us. The first year of opening a gym was, was bad. I was not on board with it. Like you're going to quit your like three-figure job a year to open a gym like but what like I just graduated nurse practitioner school we have three kids like you're crazy so we would had a mentor and we would get on calls and we would just fight on the calls with our mentor um but after working through that in a year in when he was able to quit his job and like I got to see how much happier he was that's Mm -hmm. when like things really got a lot better for us I am talking about you it's hard to put a price tag on that what up Shoike (laughs) so I had um another question that I hope you know people will hear and be able to take that away maybe it'll help them so dealing when um for you like as a spouse uh, and your your spouse is struggling with things and still trying to cope with what they brought back and trying to like, for him, it was like trying to find himself and find his purpose and being happy, unhappy and miserable and an asshole. Um, when you'd have those arguments and have that type of, you know, as you guys were working through that, where did you find your support? So again, like wanting to ask this so that for people having to deal with their asshole like where can they try and where did you find your support and was it just on the pavement running or Mm -hmm. yeah running and my family like my mom was great um you know she was like my best friend like super good mom so I think but running was like a huge thing for me um but it still is like 
that is how I, like, if you ask Matt, if I don't get up and work out at 3 a.m. in the morning, I'm not a nice person throughout mm-hmm. the rest of the day. Like, it's my way to get out my, like, anxiety, um, my control <laughs> issues, I would mm-hmm. say. Um, so, yeah, like, physical activity is so good for you. It releases those, like, feel-good endorphins, mm-hmm. helps get away all of that stress, um, and people just don't utilize it enough. They turn to alcohol and food and Mm -hmm. all this other stuff that isn't good for you yeah and I have found lately like in January doing I was doing good at the beginning of the month in December and then we had Christmas visitors that threw me off my game January has been going good and I one of the things that I just noticed being at the gym is like I actually do a good job of like not thinking about anything mm-hmm. outside of the gym. And so that has been really nice, really nice. Okay. I think well, like one thing too was we just learned how to communicate with each other. Like, yeah. and that takes time. Like when you're married to someone, like all married couples know that. Like the first, I don't know, five to 10 years of marriage are rough. But now we like, I know what battles not to pick. Like, if he leaves his socks on the floor, like I used to be so anal about it that we would get in like fights about it. Like now I'll just pick them up. Like, right. Right. It's not the end of the world. Um, and I'm very kind of like, suck it up, just go do it. And so learning to be like more listening. I'm I'm like that with my kids too. I need to be more like listening and with my clients, I'm amazing at it. But when it comes to my family, I'm like, just freaking do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I do get it. Oh, well, yeah. it's so it's been wonderful. Gosh, you have just rocked my socks off with a story that um, of, of triumph over the, the biggest struggle in your life and now using it as your main life purpose and being so passionate about it and continuing to want to just grow and learn more and more and more and being disgusted by the wellness program at your hospital. I bet that changes because of you. It will at some point. I'm in this um, really cool CrossFit health fellowship right now. So I'm learning um, just about different ways to practice medicine that you don't necessarily do in the conventional like clinic setting. So it'll be really cool the next year to see what I can do with that. Mm Mm-hmm. I look forward to watching it and I look forward to keep learning from you on uh, Facebook that I stalk you on. First of all, yeah. I'm going to work hard at getting what, like an eight pack like you have <laughs> and um, <laughs> as strong as you are and, and just make it because I have been super, okay, I'm going to ramble now, but I'm going to stop rambling now, but I've learned so much from it and it's gotten me pumped up, uh, this month. Good. Actually, even since Matt's call, since Matt's call, I was like going on the internet, looking up different CrossFit workouts. Cause I wanted to try it out. And now that I've learned a couple different moves, I'm going to venture out and get different workout. <laughs> like, Good. So, I, I dig it but thank you so much for coming on here today and getting yeah. comfortable with the uncomfortable and sharing like being so honest being so honest and vulnerable to share that incredible story oh thanks <laughs>